boom, Longhorns grab another uh, from the transfer portal. Uh, CJ, it's uh, getting to be an embarrassment of riches for the Longhorns. Uh, Texas uh, adding Amari Nyblack, uh, tight end out of Alabama, former five-star prospect uh, from St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, had 20 catches for 327 yards, four TDs for the Alabama's, Alabama Crimson Tide this past year. One of those, a 39-yard touchdown uh, catch, by the way, against the Texas Longhorns where he kind of weaved his way through some defenders and left them in the dust. Uh, he's certainly a yet another big-time weapon for Steve Sarkeesian in this offense. If there is a uh, theme to this offseason for Steve Sarkeesian, it is reloading the cupboard uh, on the offensive side of the ball with uh, older players that can find a place uh, at Texas in the as a receiver, not just tight end, but also wide receiver. What do you think uh, Amari Nyblack brings to this roster that maybe Texas lacks right now? Well, you certainly talked about the filling of the cupboard at the wide receiver, the pass catching position, really, because you add yeah. tight end to that conversation and you certainly would like to see the production sustain from what it was with Jatavian Sanders. It's a tall task. It's not something that you should expect from Amari Nyblack, but you can certainly expect the tight end spot to maintain a threat for opposing defenses Regardless, and I think that's very encouraging. Uh, we talked about the continual theme of speed being added to this Texas offense. Amari Nyblack at six foot, six foot four, and 235, 240 pounds. He was clocked at a 10 8, 10 9 in high school. You know, that's another big body that can zoom down the field and, you know, stress defenses vertically. Very encouraging. I think you'll see a similar role to what we saw. Uh, from Jatavian Sanders this past season in terms of the deep crossing routes, the boomerangs, uh, anything in the intermediate range that will allow you to, to, to put defenses in a bind. Uh, but on the, the flip side of things, he's six foot four. You know, if you use him as a flex tight end or you use him in that slot position, as we saw Jatavian Sanders often at times this past season, He's a big body. Texas has gone out and added, you know, six foot uh, uh, Matthew Golden, 5'11", Isaiah Bond, 5'8", Silas Bolden. Now you're adding a bigger body on the inside to stress linebackers and safeties, but the speed maintains, and I think that's more important than just about anything else. Yeah, let, let me ask you this. This is the third uh, portal pickup from Alabama uh, following Nick Saban's uh, retirement. Isaiah Bond, of course, was the first one. Uh, you now, uh, then you had Kendrick Blackshear, the linebacker, and uh, now you have uh, Amari Nyblack. The, the question I have for you is this, uh, you know, we don't think if Nick Saban wouldn't have retired, Bond and Nyblack probably don't go in the portal. Uh, you know what I mean? Is right. this just the new wave of college football or is, is Texas just happen to be um, lucky? I mean, in your opinion, uh, you know, or is Texas becoming – that school that people want to go to because they can get the ball to you in space. I mean, that's what Steve Sarkeesian does, right? It, it it certainly is. And it's certainly the reputation that a lot of prospects around the country have about Texas. You talk about Ryan Williams, the five-star 2024 receiver and why he's interested in Texas. Well, it's because of Steve Sar Sarkeesian and his offense and how he can disperse the football. I think it's kind of a best of all worlds right now for Texas. You lose a lot of pass catchers from a year ago. You lose your starting tight end. You lose three caliber uh, NFL caliber wide receivers and two more depth pieces to the portal. St uh, Nick Saban retiring allows for Texas to go out and add an Isaiah Bond, add in an Amari uh, Nye Black as well. Those pieces probably wouldn't be available had that you know big domino of Nick Saban retiring not fallen. That's not to say Texas wouldn't have added other pieces at the wide receiver position. Obviously, they were in you know c contact with uh, uh, C.J. Daniels out of Liberty. We talked about Ben Yurisich out of Stanford as well. They would have been active in those markets, but it was a perfect fit in the sense that as a result of Nick Saban retiring, these guys wanted to go find an offense that can take the top off of defense, spread the football around, put up big numbers, and also compete for championships. And Texas is – that school right now, that is the next train of thought that a lot of people nationally are starting to see Steve Sarkeesian and what he's building down here in Austin as the next step in that, that you know, kind of hierarchy of college football. And it certainly helps that you're going to be having a third year Quinn Ewers returning as one of the top quarterbacks in all of the country to get that ball out to uh, a, a lot of, you know, talented pass catchers now. Let me ask you this, uh, the tight end position at Texas. 
How does it stack up now? Gunnar Helm, obviously back. We know that. Uh, but Juan Davis expected to return. Spencer Shannon, Will Randall, both young guys. Gunnar Helm is a more well-rounded tight end, maybe, than Amari Nyblack, but may not be the pass-catching threat, right? That's absolutely true. Um, I, I look at Gunnar Helm as someone that's going to help you more on the inline blocking. Uh, I think we saw that at times last year, you know, with Jatavian Sanders on campus. You know, he wasn't, I wouldn't say the most physical blocker, most willing blocker. Uh, that's, you know, I think, again, it was Gunnar Helm who was that man at that spot. You're going to see that again with Amari Nyblack. I'm not going to say he's, you know, a, a negative in the blocking game, but he certainly has room to work. I think there's going to be some progression there with Jeff Banks this offseason. Uh, and luckily, having watched the tape for, from his time at Alabama, he's willing to block. He's willing to put a hat on, an, on another hat and be physical in the trenches, not in something that you always see uh, from, you know, tight ends that like to catch the football. So that's encouraging to me, but it's going to take time to get to that point. Uh, with Gunnar Helm specifically, he does have the pass catching threat uh, with his game. You saw the big touchdown against Oklahoma. He has a number of other catches later on in the season as well, kind of intermittently kind of tossed around through, uh, through games, but always on the field, you know what he can bring in the pass blocking, the run blocking and everything along the lines of that as well. Oh, there's a reliability factor of Gunnar Helm. Without and a doubt. Every coach loves that. Uh, every fan should love that in some ways because you know what you get when you see him on the field. And frankly, he's working himself into a situation where he might be end up being an NFL tight end himself. Yes, no, he's not going to be an A++ receiver. Uh, that's not necessarily his game or what he, he does. But what he is becoming is a well-rounded, good tight end. Uh, and now you add the X factor at that tight end position, I think, with Nye Black, right? You mentioned the 10, 8, 10, 9, 100 meter uh, speed at that size that, that this allows Sark to really, I mean, we talk about, we call on, we talk about all the time. I mean, how versatile is this offense right now when you have guys like Nye Black as well as, I mean, you've got Jaden Blue right next to Cedric Baxter. You got a speed running back right next to a power running back. Uh, you've got a, a quarterback that can distribute the ball. You've got receivers that can take the top off of the defense and catch it underneath. I, I feel like what we're what we're looking at here is I don't want to say an offense that's unstoppable because that's that's just hubris and and fantasy, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? I mean, the the reality of it is that you can make things darn difficult to stop, right? Yes. It's never going to be perfect, you know. Even the greatest teams of all time, not perfect, but you can make things more difficult to stop. And I just feel like this is another. I mean, it's it's Sark flexing a little bit right now because he's he knows where his bread is buttered on offense, and that's in the receiving game, and just being that difficult team uh, to to uh, defend on on just about every level. I couldn't agree more, and I'm with you. It's hard to say that an offense is is going to be you know unstoppable, but Sarkeesian is making it look very difficult to find a weakness with this roster construction on the offensive side of the ball, you know, you look at the best offenses that we have seen in college football over the last couple of years. Sure. Sometimes they've had some quarterbacks that have elevated the play of the team in total, but there's not necessarily been big weaknesses on their roster. You look at LSU specifically in 2019. Yes. Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, they get the big headlines, but Terrace Marshall was a high four-star wide receiver. Clyde Edwards Hilaire was a first round running back and Thaddeus Moss was also drafted in that same draft not to mention a few NFL linemen as well. So it's a full, you know, kind of uh, a fledged attack on that offense where you can't necessarily find a weakness or a tendency in which to pick on uh, if you're an opposing defensive coordinator. And right now we talk about the roster construction right now for Texas. There's speed everywhere. There's a lot of veteran experience everywhere. And there's people that have big time numbers at every single produ uh, productive uh, position on the field. And I think that's, you know, I'm, I'm sitting back here smiling because, Again, it, it's it's hard to stay unstoppable, but it's making it very, very difficult on paper right now to stop this Texas offense. Well, I do think this is important. Uh, another reason Nye Black's uh, commitment is important is it does add size, downfield size. Yeah, absolutely. Because as of right now, none of the guys they that they have kind of earmarked probably to be starters, not uh, Jonte Cook, uh, not uh, Matthew Gold, not Isaiah Bond, none of them are big guys. Really, right. the only big receiver that we think we'll see a bunch of time this year 
uh, is is uh, uh, Ryan Wingo, but he's a he's an outside guy. This is totally different. This gives you a guy on the in, that can play in the slot a little bit uh, and flex out. Yeah, and I, I think it's interesting. Some of Quinn Ewers' best throws that we've seen him make at Texas have been those little slot seams to tight ends. You know, Jatavian Sanders against Oklahoma, we saw it at home a few times as well. Uh, that's been, you know, one of those go-to throws that Quinn Ewers likes to make. So I, I think you certainly see that same type of mold kind of take place for an Amari Nye Black or even a Gunner Helm because Sarkeesian loves 12 personnel and he loves being able to, you know, put defenses in a bind and get, you know, formations and, and, and uh, you know, personnel on the field that match up well for his guys. We'll certainly see that same type of attack with Amari Nye Black, and it's certainly encouraging to know that Quinn Ewers has a history with the playmaking tight end with Jatavian Sanders last year. I, and before that, the guys like Irv, I mean, he's used the tight end effectively. And that 100%. is one of the reasons why probably Amari Nye Black is now a Texas Longhorn. <laughs> I mean, to be frank, I mean, right? They, you've got a history of doing that. You just prove that. you got number two tight end and – you know, look, I, I just think it's terrific uh, that uh, this guy's uh, going to Texas. Uh, CJ, one last thing I want to mention for those we lose. A, we use a lot of vernacular around here. Uh, that's kind of football linko and not everybody understands it. Twelve personnel. Whenever you hear somebody say 12 personnel or 10 personnel, et cetera, what that means is the number of running backs is the first number and the number of tight ends is the second number. So 10 personnel would be one running back, no tight ends. That would include uh, three uh four wide receivers, excuse me, 11 personnel would be one running back, one tight end and three wide receivers and so on. Uh, so just yeah, make sure everybody understands that. All right. Uh, that's going to do it. Uh, Longhorns grab a terrific commitment, really one that could be a game changer for him and changes. Uh, it changes the perception of the offense, I think, because it, it does give them that bigger downfield receiver threat in the seam. Uh, and he's a big play threat with that speed. Uh, and so it just continues to put, more speed on the field for the Longhorns. All right, that'll do it, CJ. Thanks for your time, bud. Uh, and thank you guys for watching. And uh, to Amari Nyblack, Amari, hook him, bud.